and I'm going to make Allegra the host. And um, I'm finishing up my finals, guys. Have a good meeting. Thank you. And, um, let me see. Uh, okay, I guess I'll do the formal thing. Hold on one second. Um, so it is 6.05 and I'm calling to order the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Um, with the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendance and members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so that is the official thing that I have to do. And then, so I am just realizing that when I sent out the email, I think the time said 6.30 on the original email, but then the time with the meeting link came as 6. So I don't know. So let me call, let me see if I can reach uh, Deb. Okay. I, yeah, I just don't know if that might have caused some confusion, and I don't, I have not heard back from D from our um, agenda planning with Jen. They, they have a conflict today. Okay, thank you. Time conflict. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that if there was a miscommunication around time, we are allowing Deborah the opportunity to come. I'm reaching, yeah, I'm. Um, Reaching out to her right now. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Also, since um, neither Jen nor Pamela can be here tonight, I suppose I will try and take notes to the best of my ability so we have some sort of minutes. Um, She'll be joining us shortly. She thought it's 6.30. Okay, that's, I realized it, I think, too late to, yeah. to do anything about it. Um, so I guess, I can start with the agenda review, and I don't know if you heard Miss Pat, but I just said um, neither Jennifer nor Pamela could stay for the meeting tonight, so I will take notes to the best of my ability. Okay. Um, so first, we will have public comment, then member reports, then the action and discussion items are the joint press release debrief um, from the 5-10-23 HRC and town council meeting, update from Amherst 6, and then the CSSJC letter regarding the police chief search and the League of Women Voters letter regarding that as well, then additional public comment and upcoming agenda. Um, so that is the order of affairs for this evening. As of right now, I am not seeing any members of the public present in the audience as attendees. Um, so it is just the four of us and I will keep an eye out for Deborah to join us. Um, Ms. Pat. So I have comment about the agenda. Did you, I didn't hear the, the, um, the vote, the, uh, the, the letter 
about George Floyd anniversary. Yes, sorry, that was the first agenda <laughs> item. Okay, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, no, thank no. you. Um, so seeing that there's no public for the public comment, does anybody have any reports or announcements to make? Yes, Ms. Pat. Yes, I do. So I just want to thank ARHA um, a group, the reparation group. Uh, they came to a BBAA a meeting for a listening session. Uh, they wanted the Black business, businesses to share their experiences um, of running business in our town. Um, Ms. Pamela Young and Ms. Jennifer Moistin also was in they were also in attendance. So I just want to really thank them, appreciate them for taking um, uh, some of their Sunday afternoon to join uh, my group. So um, I just want to appreciate them. So I have an announcement. Uh, Black Business Association of Amherst, we are having Juneteenth celebration on June 19th from 4 p.m. till dawn. That will be live music, um, free food, free uh, beverages, and it's going to be at uh, Mill River in Amherst. Um, this is not going to conflict with what uh, Ms. Marston, you know, usually plans for the year. So uh, the one that she's planning starts from Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, I believe, is the Ancestral Bridges. Sunday, I think, is movie or something at the cinema. On Monday, um, at the town common, from 10 a.m. to whenever. But my group, we're doing um, Juneteenth celebration starting from 4 p.m. Um, the Black Business Association of Amherst area. Some of the members of BBA actually um, started the Juneteenth in 2010 and then came um, COVID. So, um, so we're starting again this, this year. Yeah. Thank so you, we're inviting people, there will be flyers on social media. We're inviting the public to show up. Good food. Come on down. Wonderful. No formalization, no, no selling. We're not selling any, any food. Yeah. Thank you for that, Ms. Pat. Uh, Dr. Frecke? I just wanted to say food is always good. Always, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Not Nigerian food days, but it's cookout. <laughs> <laughs> and I see Philip. Yep, uh, the Human Rights Commission is putting on uh, June 11th the Youth Hero Awards at the Mill District. And so just wanted to get that on people's agendas and radar. There's a flyer going on. So if you have any youth that you would like to nominate for a Youth Hero Award, um, please feel free to do so. It's on our um, homepage at the HRC as well as the town. I'm sorry, Philip, is that at Mill River or the Mill District? Uh, Mill River. So it's not too late to nominate our, okay. No, you can nominate, yeah. Or okay. I think we're um, until the end of the month here is last day. And even if you, I mean, get in a little late, we're not gonna be that stickler for it. Good. Hi, Deb. Hi, Deborah. Again, sorry for the mix up. I realize one email said one time and then the invite said a different time. So yeah, because I was at home just waiting for 630. So yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Um, we were just going over announcements. Miss Pat um, talked about the AHRA visiting the Black Business Association of Amherst meeting, as well as the DEI department, and that there will be a Juneteenth celebration put on by the Black Business Association on Monday the 19th at 4 p.m. till dawn at Mill River. And Philip was talking about the Youth Hero Awards happening June 11th at Mill River. And Dr. Frecke added that he enjoys food and celebration. So 
That's, so that's, um, yeah. I wanted to ask in terms of the Juneteenth one, Miss um, Pat, is that going to be separate from what the town is doing? Yes. Oh, okay. but, um, yes, but um, my group will also attend all of them. Oh, okay, so you all are having it like different times and stuff like that? Exactly. Oh, yeah. okay. We will also attend um, all the three that Jennifer is putting together. This, um, yeah. Yep. So, so what time again is your event? Just start at 4, 4 p.m. till done. At this where? Time. Yeah. Where is at it? Yeah. Where is it gonna be? At Mill River. Mill River. Okay. Yeah, got free it. food, free beverages, no selling, no commercialization. Um, along the theme of uh, some families who started it in 2020, the Shabazz family, mm -hmm. the Cage, Edward Cage, mm -hmm. Dr. Baptist. Uh, family and a handful of uh, members of the community. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and the town actually participated. The recreational department, the first year that we, they, they did it. Yep. And then came uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. The group, you know, stopped, and so one restarted this year. Okay, great. So flyers will be on social media this week soon. Excellent. Yeah. Deborah, did you have any announcements or reports to make? Mm -mm, no, no, I know. All right, thank you. Um, so I guess we can move on to action and discussion items. The first oh. one. Oh. Wait one second. Did did um did they did you all send the agenda though, or is there an agenda to kind of? Um. I, I don't think we ever got the agenda. Oh, we never Let got the agenda. See if I can screen share. Um, and I'm not very good at this, so please let me know if do you see do you see the agenda up on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so the action items are the press release debriefing from the town council meeting, update on the Amherst 6, and then discussion around the police chief letters. Uh, so I can pull up the joint press release uh, three years post George Floyd, and tonight we would be voting on whether to sign on as a group to this letter. Is that correct, Ms. Pat? Yes. Okay. Um, would you like me to read aloud the letter? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Oh, ah. She's I just want to give credit to Brianna Owen, uh, who initiated it with CSWG. And um, we, uh, we passed it on to PCA. And um, we've had additional groups sign on it. On it. Uh, uh, Sunrise Amherst, and also uh, the fund for uh, Human Rights Commission last week was not able to because there was no forum. So um, we're just waiting for our group tonight to decide if they want to sign on. Thank you, Ms. Pat, for that background. Okay, so I will read this aloud. Three years ago, George Floyd was violently murdered by the Minneapolis police, one of thousands of Black men that fell victim to police brutality in the United States. The video of his murder went viral and received over 1.4 billion views. His death, for many, was a rallying cry for long-needed institutional reform. Amherst, Massachusetts was one of the many communities across the nation that made reforms in the wake of Floyd's death. Amherst Town Council drafted and ratified the resolution affirming the town of Amherst's commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity for Black residents, which acknowledges the town's history of racially motivated policies and practices, rejects pre prejudice and bigotry, and affirms its commitment to eradicating the effects of system systemically racist practices of town government and town affiliated organizations. Informed by the hard work of the Community Safety Working Group, CSWG, in collaboration with their partner consultants, Seven Generation Movement Collective and Law Enforcement Action Partnership, LEAP, 
Amherst became the first, first municipality in Massachusetts to create an alternative safety service centered around anti-racism and trauma-informed care. Amherst also created its first diversity, equity, and inclusion department staffed with two employees, and Amherst became the second municipality in the nation to begin the process of developing a reparation plan, including funding. While we acknowledge these important and monumental steps, we also take time to reflect on what has not changed in our local community. National data suggests that three or more lives are lost per day due to police brutality. The July 5th incident last summer was a painful reminder that many of the original recommendations made by CSWG have yet to be implemented and many in our community still do not feel safe or included. While the Community Safety Social Justice Committee, CSSJC, was established to continue and further the work initiated by CSWG, their recommendations largely go unheeded by town council. The Amherst Police Department specifically and the entire Amherst town government have yet to receive standardized anti-racist training and our BIPOC youth still have no promise of a multicultural center to gather in. While the COVID-19 pandemic hit all community members, BIPOC community members and black owned businesses were disproportionately impacted. And while the American Rescue Plan brought 11.9 million to the town of which the business community was awarded 650,000, none of the existing businesses owned by the Black Business Association of Amherst area were awarded any of that money. The CSWG in collaboration with the aforementioned consultants made many recommendations that remain unfulfilled. We urge our town government to revisit their proposals, including policy changes in the Amherst Police Department, policy changes informed by anti-racist training through all levels of town government, the establishment of the Youth Empowerment Center by Pop Cultural Center and the seating of a resident oversight board, um, community safety working group, Progressive Coalition of Amherst, and then I believe it was Sunrise and Defund 413 that had also signed on. Um, so that is the letter. I'm going to stop sharing my screen if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And open up for discussion about whether CSSJC would like to sign on to this letter. Yes, Ms. Pat. So for transparency, I also belong to CSWG and also PCA. So just want to put that there. Thank you for that, Ms. Pat. Yeah, and I'm with uh, CSWG, so I'm already someone that's on board with this letter. Philip or Are you Allegra, the fun. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. Um, yes, so I also in another organization, Defund 413, have signed on to this letter, um, but I do, putting on my CSSJC hat, believe that it is in line with what we're trying to accomplish in terms of putting forward the recommendations of the CSWG and trying to, you know, recognize where inequities still lie and how to move forward with those in town. Um, so I would, as a member of CSSJC, also support signing on to the letter. Philip or Freca, do you have anything to say? Um, I, I find the relevance with um, Judge Floyd and there's a lot to support. I would recommend that we take out the business parts and combine what remains of that paragraph to the paragraph that comes before it. Can you put it back up, um, Allegra? <laughs> Can we have Philip speak to? Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to see what, what he was alluding to so that we can yeah. be clear and then. So what were you talking about, Freke? Yeah, so... Um, the second to last paragraph has um, uh, BIPOC youths still have no promise of a multicultural center to gather in. Everything else after that speaks um, on the business side. I think that should be taken out. And then this paragraph moved to um, the previous one so that it is balanced because the previous one mentions of things that haven't been 
implemented. And that is one of those things. Oh, I see what, do people understand what he's saying? He's saying move that one to below. So, so the last paragraph? Take, yeah, take this out and then move the, what remains to the previous paragraph. Okay, so let's back up. Um, so we have three paragraph on three paragraphs on this page. Two of them start with wow. So the third paragraph or the first paragraph on this page has that uh, many in a community still do not feel safe or included. We okay. then begin a new paragraph. And I'm saying that we take out what is highlighted, delete it, and then move this what remains of that paragraph to this previous paragraph because what this previous paragraph talks about is about the things that haven't been done and some of the things that have not been done include the BIPOC youth um, center and the um, training the anti-racist training I don't think the business part belongs in the letter as it is well, we're going to vote. So okay. yeah. Yeah, thank just... you for your feedback. Yeah, thank we're you. going to vote tonight. Yeah. Philip? Uh, I think I have a similar thought on where Freke is held up on it. And I do, I do see the relevance of it. I do, I guess, just have some concern with the business aspect of it. And in particular too, where it does say BIPOC are well, the COVID pandemic hit all the community members, BIPOC community members and black owned businesses were disproportionately impacted. I think that it's relevant to say that all BIPOC community members were disproportionately impacted. I, I can see the relevance in highlighting black businesses in this statement and I think that's where I'm getting held up on it because I do recognize clearly the George Floyd um, murder that happened was a horrendous thing that happened and we need to highlight that we can't just be three years down the line and be like oh nothing's changed we've done this we've done that but nothing really has changed in significance to further the black community or the BIPOC community. So I, I'm not as held up as that I won't vote for this because I know that other groups are signed on. And so I, I think that it speaks relevance to have this group signed on to it. I am just held up on that a little bit. So you're saying that it should be like BIPOC owned businesses? That's what you're saying as opposed to just? Right, well, it, it, I mean, it highlights it right in the next, there, right? It says BIPOC community members and black owned businesses were disproportionately impacted. I just, I, I see the, the correlation to why black business owned businesses were highlighted. It either doesn't make sense to me to add in BIPOC community members and black businesses or to not add in black, um, BIPOC businesses in that statement as well. Like I said, though, it's, it's not something that will hold me up in a vote for it. It just, I'm voicing my opinion on that. Well, I guess I have a question. So since others have already signed on, do we have the wherewithal to be able to change it or would we just do a separate letter then? Like the, the, those, so CSWG and the progressive, Co and the, the other ones would kind of do this letter. And then if we made changes, we would do a different letter. Is that what would happen? Ms. Pat. To you, I sure. So, so basically, um, it was a suggestion that was made to pass it on to other groups to weigh in. And other, other groups like got back to, to me like very quickly. I think, you know, um, the whole theme about this press release is that racism still persists in our community. It's not only just focus on police brutality. It's about marginalization of black community more than anything else. I'm fine if we want to take out the word by, uh, 
BIPOC youth. Um, we can say black and brown youth um, because black and brown community continues to um, be impacted by racism in our town. So this is about the whole concept is about racism in general. And, um, and that's why the Black Business Association situation was added onto it. It's all about racism. So we shouldn't think it only, you know, to be only about policing. It's not only about that. And then to go to Deborah's um, question, what hap happens if um, we don't have majority, and then we then we need to decide if CSSJC, uh, CSS, if we want to write something, is is optional. We don't have to. We only have one more month um, for some people that will be moving on. So whatever we decide tonight is fine with me. Either way, this is going to print this weekend. So Ms. Pat, just to clarify, this letter is going to print as is, not as we, so we're voting yes or no to put our names on it, not amending it and then putting our name. Exactly, yes or no, yeah. 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 yeah, that's good clar That's good to know. Yeah, that's, yeah. Does anybody have any other questions for me? That isn't um, a question, it's just the, um, what I had mentioned. Part of the reason I mentioned it is because I accept, I think I read the CSWG uh, report. Mm -hmm. It didn't have um, much to say about the business side. Um, and so everything else is speaking about um, some of the stuff that had been done at least in terms of ideas from the working group. And we're looking back to say, we have made progress, but not in these areas and not with these recommendations. This doesn't stand within that other stuff. And that's one of the reasons why um, I'm hesitant to um, have it in there. For me, it just sticks out. If I may, I will encourage you, Freke, to go back and read CSWG um, notes, meetings, recommendations. Um, we did address racism within uh, business community, CSSG, uh, CSWG. We did discuss it in some of our meetings. It probably did not make it to recommendations, but I am very 100%. So I raised it at CSWG. Why wouldn't I? So it's something that we discuss. And the and the marginalization continues. It has not stopped. Um, does that help? It it does, but that's then it 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 comes down to the stylistics. The stylistics being that everything else we can point to recommendations that are made and that have not been followed through. But even though this was discussed, for some reason, it didn't appear. And so there must have been reasons um, unbeknownst to us why that wasn't the case when it comes to the business side. Um, I do think this is an important issue. I don't know if it belongs in the letter as is. So maybe we can just vote and we'll see how we go from there. OK, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to call people as I see them on my screen. Ms. Pat? Yes. Uh, Dr. Frecke? No. Deborah? Yes. Sorry, I am note taking as well because we don't have anybody from uh, DEI here tonight. So <laughs> excuse the pauses. Um, Philip? I think I had said kind of what my holdup is on it. And I just want to add that anything that CSSJC puts forward 
from here on out can be a recommendation added to CSWG. That is what this predecessor group is meant to do. So my vote will be a yes. Um, and I am a yes. So it passes with four yeses and one no. And now I'm gonna figure out how to take it off the screen. Okay. Uh, so our next, I, I'm sorry, but I feel like I don't know where everything is. Um, our next item of business is to debrief from the joint HRC town council meeting from May 10th. Um, I guess what we think went well, what might not have gone so well and what we hope to see from it. Is there anything else you would add to commentary feedback from that? Yeah, I think that I would just add um, from what I added from um, HRC is that I think the way that the meeting was ran was very well done. I felt like um, in previous meetings with town council members, it was very often we were on the outside of the room, um, virtual room, if you will. <laughs> and uh, this time I felt like we were inside and much with the prioritization of us speaking. And so I think that I just want to, um, again, publicly thank Michelle and as well as publicly thank um, Lynn for allowing that to happen, because I think that we have seen that that's not always the case. And so I will give her a thank you as well. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Deborah. Um, yeah, I want to, you know, thank uh, Michelle, especially for um you know facilitating the meeting and like uh phil said philip said that it, it was you know well run in terms of making sure that we were part of the meeting and then obviously prioritizing us um i just think like it, it could have been just kind of the order of how things were going to go probably could have been explained a little bit better i don't think that was on the show i think like lynn could have explained that a bit better because like even for me like i started the whole thing by seeing all of my suggestions and then i had to kind of repeat my suggestions again part by part you know what i'm saying so that could have been um kind of clarified early on um and then you know and then for me though lynn i, I do want to you know publicly kind of discuss my disappointment at, you know, as the meeting went on, um, how it was getting later and later in, in, in the night. And then I think someone had had discussed, well, you know, maybe we can have another meeting day to kind of continue going through this. And then Lynn basically was just like, no, we had, we had already um, had this day for us to discuss this issue. And so we need to do that. And it's just like, you know, I felt that that was really disrespectful, you know, because basically, you know, it kept on dragging out. People were exhausted. You know, no one could think straight. Um, you know, I basically stated, you know, I mean, you know, we're, we're a volunteer group. You know what I'm saying? I have, you know, kids, elder at home and stuff like that. And, you know, no regard, just disregarded it. And for that, this was very important issue, very important topic that we've been bringing up all along in terms of CSSGC around, you know, what happened with, um, you know, the Amherst 9, Amherst 6 situation and July 5th situation and everything and, and how, you know, the town dragged their feet. And again, I felt it was like they didn't, it was purposefully done for us to continue going into like what? I, I left at 11 at night and people were still like going on into, into midnight or whatever time. I don't even know what time it ended, you know? So I don't even know what happened at the end or anything like that. And, and I'm a very vocal person. So I felt it was like a way to silence me, um, knowing, you know, that I'm a vocal person, that I had more to say, but I just couldn't because I had to leave because of my, you know, family obligations. Um, and Lynn was the one that put it right out there. And she's the leader of the, of the town council. She could have very well said, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and let's, you know, schedule another date. You know, I'm sorry, I, I understand town council is, is busy, but this is important. You're, you're again, showcasing to the BIPOC people that our issues are not important to the town, right? That, that being anti-racist and dealing with racism in this town is not important. And so, you know, 
People just started, you know, glazing over, not talking about the issues in its totality, besides a few people. And like I said, I had to leave. So it was a way to silence me. And I'm sure silence others. So I want to publicly, you know, say my, you know, my just disappointment, sadness, frustration, and, um, and say that it was very disrespectful towards what we were trying to accomplish that night. And if someone could fill me in, whoever was able to stay until like, I don't know, after 11 could fill me in in terms of what happened, it would be nice. Thank you, Deborah. I do think that that is an important point because I, you know, I think all of our time is valuable and while it can be frustrating to try and find time to all sit together and meet, it's also frustrating to have meetings go on until 1130 at night when we've been, you know, that was, I don't know, I think what a five hour meeting. That's, it is a lot. Um, and I, you know, I don't know what the best answer is because obviously here we are having another debriefing session after a meeting that, I mean, I think went better than meetings in the past have gone, but certainly went very long. And I think, I think at the end, many of the kind of important things that we wanted to talk about around CRESS and um, DEI and the Youth Empowerment Center especially kind of got maybe glossed over because again, it was hour five of the meeting and, and everyone was very tired. Um, I mean, I think Miss Pat, I'll, I'll let you speak and then I'll so I want to echo what three of you have already said. Um, I think for me, having been silenced by the um, council president in the past to have Councillor Michelle actually facilitate the discussion was uh, really a good thing for me. I felt like I can speak without being silenced. Um, I think, you know, I agree also with Deborah. like I really didn't know what the, the process was going to be. Uh, we didn't know, I, you know. Um, so to me at the beginning it was confusing, but overall I thought it was um, much better joint meeting that we've had in the past. However, it is still, you know, uh, a show because nothing came out of it. Um, so, you know, Deborah, uh, at the end, I believe the uh, council president Lane had said, well, we, you know, the town manager will need to update the council, town council about the progress they are making. And so to me, it was like, no surprise right there. It's a waste of time writing reports, collecting dust, like it doesn't collect dust anymore. It's, you know, stuck in um, mass.gov website, you know, not much um, came out of it for me uh, in terms of what um, we had hoped uh, to happen, which is uh, increasing CRES uh, budget, uh, DEI, the o oversight board, when is this going to happen? Like just concrete stuff, youth center, like nothing, you know, I left feeling like nothing is going to, it's the same thing that we already knew before we came in, there was no promises or, oh, maybe we'll look back at the budget or whatever. Um, so that was disappointing to me, but um, not, not surprising. I do uh, want to say for me um, personally that I appreciate uh, Councillor Dorothy PM really been courageous to really um, express her concern around when I raised uh, uh, issue uh, about the BBAA, uh, Black business owners. So, you know, it takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, I also, I think for me personally, I got something out from having the town manager wanted to uh, connect with me and he did do that. 
um, hit in. Um, we exchanged email, but we haven't set a date. Um, it will be sometime in June, hopefully, to discuss, you know, MSX and APA funds for Black businesses because we're not giving up. <laughs> I think our town did the legal stuff by denying some Black business owners funding for illegal excuses that was given to them. So um, I want to touch on Allegra. Thank you so much for presenting for us, especially for reading out loud some of our uh, quotes from the MS6. They want me to send heartfelt thank you to you and to the two committees, of course. And um, that's what I can say now, since we have you know, that on an agenda, I'll have more stuff to talk then. Let's see. Um, the last thing is that I, I want to ex express my solidarity with um, trans youth for what they went through, the middle school students. Um, with some, uh, with some of our school personnel. So I just want to put that out. I appreciate people who came out, residents, who, you know, staff that came, you know, that, you know, spoke, spoke up, advocated. And we have, you know, empl some employees being on administrative uh, leave. I think that's the right thing to do. However, I am frustrated that Black and brown youth were detained, harassed by MS police on July 5th, and nobody called out our chief of police to, you know, advocate for him, you know, for him to get administrative leave or even step down. And even the two white officers that are no uh, accountability. And I will tell you guys what I think the reason is. When things impact white families, the reaction is, is quick and swift. When it, when it affects brown and black families, like policing situation, because we're so immune to it, it's not because people are afraid to speak up, it's because that's what the image, imagery that we've been getting about, well, what else is new that's, you know, Black people and police, it doesn't impact white people is what I'm trying to say. Even with what happened in our school district with our trans youth, some of them may be kids of color, but perhaps their parents are white parents. And so that's why we have this huge, big organizing. I loved it, it's good. I'm sorry for what happened to, to the youth, but this is, we should be consistent in our community, the way we respond to injustice, to lack of accountability. We still don't know what the administration did to the two white officers. Why, why? Why do we you know, have double standard for, 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 for BIPOC families and their kids? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. And thank you, Allegra, you were so very help helpful with the with the school yeah yeah Rekha, do you have any thoughts to share about the meeting um not a lot so i think the meeting was long uh, but besides that i think it's a reminder that the group reflects the voices of um, different segments of the Amherst community. And so one of the things that we can do is continue to shine light on those issues that affect those communities and we can stand in as the amplifiers of those communities since they can't all be in a meeting like this. And, and and so it's it's a huge responsibility and one that we should, we should take seriously, I think, 
that is um, what I've, I've, I've gotten both from this particular meeting, but also from what we had um, in the last meeting. We should continue to remember that we, we amplify the voices of those who can't be here and we can encourage those who um, may not be able to attend the meetings, but because they're long, because everyone, almost people have other things that um, they do find ways to get um, others from our community involved in some of the local politics. I think that would be very helpful. If the issues we're interested in aren't getting the visibility or impact, um, something we can do again is both amplify, but also find a way to encourage others to be part of the political process. Thank you, Freke. Ms. Pat? I have one important um, issue I wanted to also mention is the fact that what I heard, what I read in the community, people believe the trans youth. And why wouldn't we? I believe them. However, with the incident on July 5th, we have our so-called black leaders commenting both publicly and in the media questioning the, the amount of pain that these kids are going through. They were, you know, I heard people say, at least they were not shot. At least they were not detained for so long. At least we haven't seen the rest of the video. There is more to it. Almost what some of our black leaders have done is that they have contributed in harming these kids because word is very powerful. What we say is very powerful. Basically doubting the pain of our black and black our brown youth on July 5th. But I've not had the same similar black leaders doubting the trans youth that, that were also uh, abused in our school system. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. I do agree that that's a really important distinction to draw and to, to think about, you know, and I think you're absolutely right is who's, who's affected and who shows up to speak out um, and, and when they do and don't um, is something that we need to think about as a community and certainly myself as a white person in this community, I've, I've been noticing the differences over the past couple of weeks. Um, and I think like Freke says, we just have to continue to shine the light um, on disparities and continue to give voice to those who might not be able to attend a meeting or haven't found the right pathways into participating in town government yet. Um, I just, I guess my takeaway from the meeting was I, I felt discouraged and I kind of felt like there wasn't a plan that I understood going forward in terms of the recommendations. Um, and I certainly felt that the response around CRESS and funding for CRESS and expanding CRESS um, was disappointing. And while I understand the idea behind slowly unrolling things and making sure that they feel comfortable in, in doing things first before they move to a next phase of things, it also seemed strange to me that we're out there promoting what Cress is doing and, and acting as a model to other towns if we're not sure that we can do our model the way it was proposed in the first place. And, and from my understanding, that includes around the clock services. So I guess my hope is that 
there will be more counselors who say, oh, there, there are a lot of things that we said we were going to do in this resolution and, and we haven't really figured out a plan forward. And we do need to maintain the conversation around this rather than just having this, oh, another box that we checked because we had this meeting and, and now, you know, because I, I don't, I don't think that the meeting resolved anything or, or put forward a good plan for next steps for most of the things identified. So um, I guess that's, I'm feeling not surprised by that, but again, discouraged. And um, I guess that perhaps what we do as a group, as a follow-up might be what something that we have to discuss maybe not tonight but <laughs> just you know I think that could be next step yeah. for this group I also just want to thank um uh let's see Philip and Freke for putting together our response yes. I like how the two committees you know united to refocus our concerns around CSWG recommendations and also around July 5th. Because the goal for the town council president is to confuse the public, you know, try to ignore what we're pushing for, but we didn't fall for it. We, we you know, we brought our, you know, what issues that were more important to us, we made sure that they were, they were you know, at least brought forward. So I, I'm so grateful for the two committees and for the leadership of Philip and Freck for putting all that together. I know you said, you know, hard, hard, hard work. It's a lot of work to put it together. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask, since like I said, uh, you know, I, I couldn't, I wasn't able to stay till the end and all of that. And so Ms. Pat, you said that not nothing much kind of came out of the end. So I guess what will be our response to this, you know, CSSGC in terms of the fact that, you know, we spent all those hours, you know, uh, on there, took the time, you know, Philip and Freke took the time to gather all our in input and put it out there and so on and so forth. Um, you know, so another kind of dog and, and, and pony show, or what, what are we going to, what's going to be our response um, to this? Because we need to continue the pressure as opposed to just being like, okay, whatever. Now, now, you know, the town manager is going to, you know, what is it present to the town council and so on and so forth. I'm like, what, what is going on here? It's just kind of like gaslighting and, and continuing to just keep us, you know, like moving the target type of thing is what I feel <laughs> so that we you know stay uh, constantly confused in terms of what it is that we we're here to do so yeah what are we doing with our next with our next step I mean I can certainly write a follow-up email as the co-chair to um, both the town manager and the town council president and just say you know we at our next meeting, we'd like to have kind of a plan of, of what next to do. So what are the next steps that you are taking? What are the next steps you are? Where are the areas of input from our committee? And, and when do we need to be involved in these discussions? And, um, and when should we set next meeting? I, if that, if those three things would be the primary things we want to focus on or if there are other things well i mean i think i think they need to so we spent all that time and we we sent them a document right mm -hmm. that kind of showcased the, the deficiencies in the report right and and especially like in terms of like i'll just bring up one example right with the oversight board and them going to back to the drawing board they already have an rfp out that we didn't even see and everything that you know, I'm assuming goes back to the drawing board and is, is asking again to redo all the work that CSWG did as opposed to just set up the oversight board because we already did all the legwork. CSWG already had done all the legwork. Just set it up. That's what we need. You see what I'm saying? So my thing is, yeah, and that email is like, okay, so we gave you all the feedback. We gave you all the document. 
So what are you going to do to actually implement what we suggested? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we can't give them any, any wiggle room. So when are you going to implement what we suggested and by, by when, you know, it's, it's really simple by when, because, and, and, and if they, you know, if they don't, or, or we need to kind of set up another meeting. And I, I think that, well, I don't know about another meeting. It's just like, oh my God, meeting with these people are just sometimes just a waste of time. Um, but really, yeah, at least for me, those would be the two important things. And I think we need to add some other, some other things. I don't know, Ms. Pat, do you have an idea? Well, I guess that I have, you know, isn't, you know, practical because some stuff we may not have control over it. You know, what we're discussing, I'm glad we're discussing, unfortunately, we're discussing this now. I kind of saw this maybe two, three months ago. And that's when I made the decision that I will not be reapplying to CSSJC as much as I feel that CSSJC is my baby, sort of. But I don't want to, you know, I think I can still be effective if I get off my term in other ways. But basically, for whatever reason, the town council leadership doesn't see CSSJC as a as a as a collaborative committee that they can work with, and so she holds all the power to decide where issues should go, the direction it should go. One of the things could be we need to change the makeup of the town council. Election has consequences. If we continue to have the leadership we have now, I'm afraid that, I mean, we'll continue to advocate, but if it's not their priority, it's not going to happen. The whole reason of having CSSJC is to ensure that CSWG recommendations are implemented. It's also to, uh, to provide a resource for our town government. They're not utilizing CSSJC as they're supposed to. And it's a shame. If they think they can get majority BIPOC committee like this, people saying the way we've been treated, good luck. And I can't speak for H HRC. It has to be priority for predominantly white officials for them to take issues seriously. It has to impact them. You, you know, BIPOC cultural center doesn't impact them. Why would they want to push for that? That's not their priority. So, you know, it's still about power. It's about racism. Let's call it what it is. But I have faith in you guys that, you know, pushing through will continue to, you, know, you guys will continue to do that. I'll be behind the scene, you know, trying the best I can. I'm not going to abandon you guys, but we're in for a long ride, unfortunately. This is our mess. We do a lot of talking, very little action. I know I didn't provide any solutions. Joint meetings, we, we've seen it. It didn't help. I mean, they'll probably tell you that they increased to, uh, for Crest program. The, in, the increment was 20K. I think they increased it to 220K. Still, that doesn't address 24 seven. And they, I, was, I was watching a budget uh, meeting. And also they have $5,000 for childcare that will start in January for elected officials. Um, and then they still didn't increase DEI budget. It's still only $6,000 extra. I don't know what $6,000 will do for DEI department that has two black women administrators. Like events like Kwanzaa, Juneteenth, Black History Month, there's no budget for it. Nothing, zip, for example. Human Rights Commission, you know, they do so many events. There is no allocation for that. I will stop.
to give other people opportunity to speak. But I'm not going anywhere. I will be around making my public comments when you guys meet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Pat, we certainly will miss you as a committee member. Um, I'll miss you guys too, but I'll be around. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I, I doubt that you will hang up your voice just because you hang up your head on this committee. <laughs> I'm excited, I think I, for, I'm excited for BBAAA. I like the direction where we're going, so it's good. But I think that's the important part, right, Ms. Pat, is that, yeah, definitely we will need you and others in the community to continue to support us and to continue to make sure to push us, right, to mm -hmm. advocate for all the important things. Because if, if we don't have the community support, then we won't be able to do the work that we do. You know, as we've been talking about, we're the ones that are amplifying the, the voices of the voiceless, right? Because, you know, a lot of people can't be at these meetings. And so how can we kind of, you know, speak truth to power if we don't have the backing of the community? So for sure, Ms. Pat, you know, you and others are going to have to be very much in our corner for us to be able to do the work. But I think, you know, what you brought up, and I think you had brought it up too, Allegra, is like, we need to, as the SSJC, really think about how do we insert ourselves within the town council, right? We can't be this ancillary group that just gets um, <clears throat> brought in when we make a little bit of noise, right? We need to be a group that, you know, gets consulted, you know, at every point when these issues are arising, as opposed to them thinking of us as an afterthought or only when we, we, we create noise. How is it, you know, and that's the thing, right? We were created because really they didn't want us to really have any power and things like that. We were just created because CSWG said, you need to have another group that's gonna continue this work since CSWG, you know, because of the finite time period they gave to us, they disbanded us because they, they wanted to disband us, right? Because we were too powerful. So they wanted to disband, it was purposely done. And so then, you know, CSWG was to continue this work. So it's really a group that was reluctantly and with a lot of resistance put into place. So we're a group that really shouldn't exist. <laughs> we exist because we put the pressure, CSWG and the, and the community, right? Put the pressure for us to exist. So that's the way we got it. We have, we have to really kind of think of it in that framing, right? With that frame of mind so that, you know, we, we, we have to really kind of talk amongst ourselves and really come up with, okay, how is it that we're going to be taken seriously and how is it that we're going to be a, a true part of the consultative process? Because right now we are disregarded. I mean, that is the case <laughs> because we, we never were meant to be anything but a, you know this annoying pebble in, in the shoe, right? Of, 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 the, of the town council and the town government and, and the system. So we, we need to kind of come up with that in term, because they're not going to come up with it, right? They're not going to do it unless we tell them they need to do it. So, um, so I think we, we we need to come up with what that is because we need to present them with the plan. Deborah, well said. I think I'm glad you know. You know, you have one more year term to keep reminding the new group. You know, whoever you know is selected to join, keep reminding the history of CSSJC. Why? It even existed. The plan is to set CSSJC to fail in two ways. One is to have status quo people that will say stuff that the powerful people want to hear. Then you become peaceful, you're very nice, you're not controversial, everything is oh yeah, 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 the time is doing wonderful. That would be their ideal CSSJC. That's what they're looking for. So in that term, in that in that way, um, it felt, but not in the sense that people say it because people are afraid to speak up. They just want to appease the powerful people. So eventually, that would be the goal to select people to say, "Yeah, everything is going great. Yeah, that's great." The second piece is us, the current group that is pushing for progress. And so what is the reaction? Ignore them, distract them, distract them. We will just not do what they ask us to do. We will come up with, you know, other agenda. 
because the last joint meeting that we attended was as a result of July 5th that the town government refused to address. And then the town council president came up with seven lists of uh, motion instead of addressing the real issue. And so that's the way they want us to feel like, you can advocate as much as you want. You can scream as much as you want. We're not going to give you what you want. We will just come up with our own agenda. And that's what they're doing. So CSS, JC, exists. It depends on the quality of people that, that will continue to sit on it. And saying that everything is okay, good, good, doesn't mean that the CSSJC is successful. No. So people have to be very careful when they join this group. Are they willing to represent the community, what this committee is all about? If people are not ready to do the right thing, they should not even join. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. Philip? Yeah, I'd have to agree with um, a lot what Deborah and Miss Pat are saying. I think that it's totally needed that sitting in a room and just saying, oh, yeah, everything is great is not going to get anything done in a progressive type of way. It just it never has in history, and I don't think it ever will in history. And so we need voices that will challenge and advise people that do have blind spots. And I mean, let's let's put it out there as white people, they in positions of power will not know the struggle of BIPOC individuals. And so groups like this is great. And I think that groups like this can be gratefully utilized in this town to Deborah's point if they've already made this committee and have put us in an advisory form, why not use us in an advisory form and continue to use us before, very key word that Deborah said, before anything happens, not after the fact, because after the fact, there's not too much that can be done. It's more like picking up pieces. If we get in a position to be advised before and kind of say, hey, this doesn't make sense, or hey, why don't we think about it this way, then we can avoid a lot of issues that come up. So I think that to um, the main point, I think that Deborah, you're making is that what, what are we going to do? How are we going to advocate for that and try and make that? And I, I would be in favor of putting something in writing to advocate for a town councilor because I know that they've pushed other issues on housing and other things for the Human Rights Commission when they make motions to motion at a town council meeting that this group, and I'll um, speak to the Human Rights Commission, but we can deal with that later, be an advisory group during the process. Sorry, that's my cat's feeder in the background. <laughs> but be in um, the advisory position to be on board with town council as they are getting information. Like Glenn put, said that night, if they're going to get information from the town manager of updates, why are we not going to be included in that as well? So I think that that might be the route to go with the town council as they know they like to get things done when it's put in writing and not just said. So maybe we need to advocate for a town councilor that is in support of CSSJC being in those updates to motion and have them vote on it, get it in writing. I like that idea, Philip. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think what I would like to do is perhaps review the minutes from the joint meeting because I think the town council had taken minutes and posted them at at some point somewhere um just because I I will admit I'm a little fuzzy as to what happened at the very end um because it was late and I was tired as we all were um and I can put something together for our June meeting for us to all review and agree on for me to send out if that seems reasonable to people. Um, and in the meantime, I don't know if anybody would want to approach any particular counselor 
if are we allowed to do that? Is that a violation of we're allowed to do that, right? Yeah, we're allowed to. Do, I mean, we're all yeah. residents and they are our elected officials, so okay. we're definitely allowed to do that. Okay. As long as it's not a quorum. Right. Correct. Yes, yeah. correct. Um so does anybody have any ideas as to who might be an ally? I mean, I think from obviously her previous experience on CSWG, I would Alicia's name would pop into my head first, but I also think about Dorothy Pam as our liaison and as somebody who at our joint meeting did stand up and and mm -hmm. first of all, I think it was very brave of her to um support Miss Pat in mm -hmm. her um having been targeted yeah. previously for speaking yeah. out. Yeah. Um but I think she also shows that she's listening in a way that's different than some of the other counselors. I mean, when she asked about some of the things I had read and I had to go back and, and make sure I had the wording right, but she, you could tell that she mm -hmm. was hearing what was being said. Mm -hmm. um, so she might be a name that would, and, and I would say Michelle as well, mm -hmm. who did the facilitation. So I don't know if anybody would want to reach out to any of those people. Um, I reach out to uh, Alicia. Okay. What am I reaching out to her again for? About Sorry. about possibly having some sort of motion brought forward around CSSJC being brought in as an advisor during during and not after um, critical instance, I guess. Um, well, probably even before. I, I just want to are. remind. Go ahead. I just want to remind us actually that part of our charge, that's what is missing in our discussion. Part of our charge is that we're, we advise the town government. So I don't know if we need to do a motion. So that's what I'm getting confused because it's already written. I can't speak for HRC because I'm not very familiar with their document, but it's already there. I was one of the people that crafted the, the draft, myself and Alicia, and then we presented it to the CSSW, CSWG for edit and approval. So that's the cornerstone of CSSJC. Right. I, We're supposed I to be advising and they're not listening to us. It goes back to, it's not important to them. It's not issues that, you know, it's urgent to them. If it's urgent, they will take it up, it would happen. It's not like, you know, uh, it's, it's impossible. We should, yeah. we, we can only look at the budget and see where our values in this town is. If our town wants to spend money on something, they will. We're getting to electric vehicles for MS police. And we still have, have no plans for youth programming, youth, youth center, go figure. So we already have that. We're not, you know, advisor, yeah. So and for, me, for me to belong to a group that is not solving problem, I can't see myself long-term because I consider myself a problem solver. I can't be with a group where problems that arises have no plan of solution. I cannot be part of it any longer. And I don't want to be status quo to say everything is great. Our town is doing great all the time. It's a problem. If anybody wants to be that, that I'm not. I get excited when I can solve problems or have plans to solve problems. So yeah. I think um, Ms. Pat brings an important point about looking back at the charge. And I think that if I review that as well as the minutes, perhaps I can weave what the charge says and our perhaps lack of utilization in that way into the draft that I put together for next meeting. I just recommend, you know, just remind this town council they, you know, they knew about the charge that, you know, just 
repeat it, send it to, you know, mm -hmm. they like repeat, repeat, remind them. You know, some of the new, new town council councillors that were elected, maybe they weren't involved in the process, but that's all you need to do in your memo, just mm -hmm. our charge. Mm -hmm. That's what we keep doing with CSWG. We keep reminding them, this is what the town manager charge CSWG to do. When we had a lot of pushback, we said, this is the charge and that's what we're doing. I think we didn't do enough of that in our group and I'll take part of the blame. But Allegra, to save yourself time, it's just the CSSJC charge. Mm -hmm. Why are we not following it? Meaning why is town council, the town government not following what they charge us to do? Now, I, the reason why I was just suggesting a motion, because it definitely is in our charge, and I know that it is in the HRC's charge as well, is more so to have a motion in play to invite us into the conversation that will be had in the upcoming year, because even though it is in our charge to advise, that's kind of them cherry picking when they want to invite us into the room to be an advisory group rather than, oh, they're having a conversation about one of the seven items that were on the list. Okay, CSSJC needs to be in the room as they are discussing as well, is more of the point that I was going to get to as a motion that will hold them by their own bylaws into that rather than just say, oh yeah, we can ask for their advice or oh, well, they can send a letter three months after we've had a conversation. And, and that's not gonna do too much. I'm happy to speak with Alicia because she's familiar with you know, CSSJC origins. So I'll talk to her and then she will get in touch with you. Is that the way it's going to work, Allegra? That's, yep, that's fine. Um, okay. And then I do see Freke and Deborah have their hands up. Excuse me. And I think this is a fruitful direction that we are taking because we are trying to get to what is the fundamental um, the fundamental scope and the goal of this um, committee. And I think after having spent a year, we are mature enough that we can begin to take on um, some roles that we may have um, not had enough time to do given some of the events that have happened um, up to this point. I think uh, what Philip says um, has some merit to it, but I think the reason if we have to move take a step beyond what Philip has said if we want to get some work done. And what I mean is it, almost exactly what has been said already. As an advisory body, if we only wait until something is recommended to us, then we can wait a long time. So part of the work would be to um, pay attention to what is going on in the council and see ways in which we can insert ourselves, whether it involves writing a letter based on something in the agenda that we see that might be pertinent to what we are working on, or if we are unable to get much done by a letter, then um, having the group um, with a representative or a spokesperson have, um, take part in the public comments. So for example, stuff related to translation, stuff related to housing, stuff related to transportation, related to immigration. These are all different issues that in some way are covered by the charge. And we don't have to wait till it is recommended to us before we advise. If we see that these topics um, are going to come up with the town council, then we can find ways in which we can bring our own voice to those issues. So Philip has, um, gotten the ball rolling on some of the things that we can do going forward. Thank you. 
Thank you, Rebecca. I think that is important. Um, the the idea of how we act as a body in between our meetings, because it, it is somewhat limiting, but at the same time, I think there are broader things that that we kind of have a sense of where our committee would probably fall in terms of advocating for something. So I, I do think it's an interesting idea of what what kinds of things can go on between meetings on behalf of the committee. Um, and that might be something to get a little bit of clarification from so that there's not violation of open meeting law. But I, I see Deborah also has her hand up, sorry. So I, I think I think it's a it's a good thing, uh, Miss Pat, what you were talking about in terms of, you know, because like what we had created in terms of what CSSJC was going to be doing and utilized. Um, is there a way to kind of bring up our charge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that we can look at it just to kind of see what what the actual language? Because one of the drafts that I have, it just but I, it has like the committee may provide advice and support to all town government entities. And that's the one I'm referring to. Yeah, but that's the thing advice. because if it's that one though, it says it may. May. It doesn't say, yeah. it, doesn't say it shall. It doesn't say it, you know the town council has to. You see what I'm saying? I think well, may, may means, you know, when we feel that it's relevant to social justice issues, like it's not in all, I know you're an attorney, so um, that's a, that's exactly the language I'm referring to. Deborah. Yeah, no, I get it. But I'm just saying, I think we need, because we, I'm just saying that obviously when we created this is because we were like, okay, this is what we want to have happen. But now we've had a year un under belt, you know, of, of actually what happened. And I think we need stronger language is what I'm saying. Because I know with these folks, if we don't have stronger language, if we don't say exactly, and that's where maybe, you know, a motion to kind of make this, the language, like we can propose like stronger language. And it, let's say if Alicia or Michelle or Dorothy Pam is able to kind of make a motion to kind of make that, you know, stronger and to really delineate that, you know, whenever there's issues of DEI, you know, a, you know, issues, social justice, which is what our name is, right? Diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice issues, they need to, to, to come and, and uh, uh, you know, that we need to provide counsel on those. So that then it, it deals with everything, you know, pre, during, and post, right? Um, as opposed to, and, and a lot of them already have said that. They said that even in the last meeting, you know, there was some of the town council, I forget who, if it was Dorothy or Michelle, or someone who said, you know, we're the ones that are like, you know, I don't like to use the word ex experts because I think, you know, we're all learners and stuff, but anyway, but we're the ones that have kind of been dealing with this for mm -hmm. years, right? In, in a variety of different ways, right? Within our own professional career, as well as our volunteer work that we do. So why aren't they tapping us? Why mm -hmm. aren't they coming to us who are the ones that have the information? Or if we don't have the information, we know how to go about and to get it. You know what I'm saying? And instead what they're doing, like when everything happened on July 5th, it was just like the town manager, remember that report that, that the town manager had the DEI, per, you know, Pamela Wright, which that report was filled with errors and had all no, no, all, no information, wasn't broad enough, didn't have anything. So instead of the town manager doing that, the town manager should have come to us, right? And consulted with us and said, hey, this happened, right? And, and, and since they didn't, they put their, 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 their hands between their legs and it was a, a mess, right? Because we would have been able to be like, okay, you're here, you, you wanna consult with us, let's consult, let's talk through some of these issues. You know what I'm saying? Let's figure out how we're going to address this, which one of the first thing would be apologize, <laughs> you know, right off the bat, as opposed to, Seven months later, or whatever months later, which what, what the town man, you know, what the town manager did. So I think that's the thing. It's just kind of like how can we make this language stronger? Because we know with these folks, this is like it's there, but it says May this and that and the third, you know, which I think we thought that's strong enough for, to deal with these folks. But again, they're in resistance. They don't want to listen to us. They want to just go ahead and do whatever they they they, they want to do as opposed to listen to what it is that we have to say. So we have to make them listen to us. I just want to bring uh, remind us that 
in this part, uh, first paragraph uh, on the purpose, it says the committee shall work to support all members of the MS community. Shall support. That's mm -hmm. one of our roles. Shall support the entire community. But it's not happening. Because you know, we're not being tapped. We're not being seen as a resource. We're seen as, uh, I don't know, I don't want to use the word. So these are the charge. Okay. Um, Allegra, if you don't mind, could you go back up to the first page? Yeah. Yeah, there. Um, I. I'll have to disagree with um, this part. I think we are supporting um, because sometimes support might come from the issues that we raise, even if it goes unheard um, or if it's not implemented. So just raising some of the topics that haven't received visibility is a form of support. I think just speaking, for example, again about um, translation for groups that may not be a part of this committee is some form of support. Um, and also in the second sentence that says the committee, committee may provide advice, may actually, for me, it's quite strong. What may means is that we have autonomy to talk about any of the issues we find pertinent to what's going on in the town. Now, what it focuses on is that we can speak about these issues, but whether these issues will then be heard and whether our suggestions will be carried out, that's beyond our scope. But to go beyond that, I would say there is no way that we can mandate the legislative body to do anything, regardless of whatever the bylaws will be. We can't mandate the town council to do something. So um, even if someone wrote that, I don't think it would be as effective as simply recognizing that anything that impinges on the community and that we find relevant is something that we can um, talk about. Um, I see Deborah. Ms. Pat can go first and then, oh. did you wanna go Ms. Pat? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. However, um, the way it works here is that, you know, community can mandate um, elected officials stuff, to do stuff, first to do stuff. If community organized, see what happened in our school system. There was pressure on the school, school committee, there was pressure on the school administration, and there was swift action. So I don't, necessarily agree that a committee cannot mandate elected officials. If there is enough support, action can be taken. It's just all I wanna say. Deborah and then Freke. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think we have to. Um, put the pressure on them yeah. uh, in terms of, you know, what, what, what we're saying, because they are, they're elected officials. They're not this just omnipotent body that is just there to do whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? And I think we can't give them any wiggle room to kind of, you know, not follow our advice. You, you see what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. for me, you know, I, again, yeah, I think for, for people who are not resistant, the language we have there is perfectly fine. It's yeah. not a problem. But we've seen what, what, has, what has happened towards this past year, which is really like they pick and choose 
we're going to make, we're going, obviously we've, we've been at a gazillion meetings this past year with the town council, yeah. you know, restating the same facts over and over again. I remember myself being, you know, at several meetings with the town council this year. So I'm not shy about saying what needs to be said, you know, in terms of what I know the community, you know, is entrusting me to say. I'm not shy about that. But the point of the matter is, it's not just saying it just for saying sake, right? That's tiring. I, I have a lot on my plate, you know? I don't wanna just be, you know, talking ad nauseum and not having any action taken, right? And so my part is, what do we need to do to make sure that action is taken? We already have seen that, that, the, that the town council, town government, town manager is not knowing how to go about uh, being responsive, right? In terms of even what you said, Ms. Pat, that yes, the town manager finally took your, your information, but remember it was, I pointed it out during the meeting. Did you talk to Ms. Pat <laughs> as a representative of the group? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that was basics, basics 101. And you have, you didn't, you know, you had said that Ms. Pat months ago that you were the mm -hmm. representative of the group. They never even went and, and, and talked to you in regards to that. You know what I'm saying? Because why? Because he never asked any advice. He's just kind of doing whatever he's doing. You know what I'm saying? So if you have a body like us, that's the majority, you know, BIPOC uh, group, why wouldn't you come and consult with us and let us guide you through this process? Again, not to say that we can't make mistakes too. We can, we're fallible, we're human, you know, but, I'm, I'm uh, but I bet you're going to do a lot better than what they did th this past year, which was really you know, not a good situation and just made the situation worse for months. And even at this point, right? Families and the young people are still hurting. There really hasn't been any resolution. There really hasn't been anything that has, you know, definitively come out of this in regards to addressing um, this issue. Because a, a, an apology from the town manager months on end down the line, it's not going to resolve all, all the problems. I think they thought that was going to be the magic wand. It's not. So that's why I'm saying we need to kind of, you know, figure this out so that then it is a direct line to the town council to say, when these issues arise, because that's our name, diversity, equity, inclusion, well, I mean, social justice and, and, and diversity group, right, CSSJC, that's our name. Why aren't you consulting us before these issues arise? And, it, most, and, and most urgently, when they do arise, before you are responsive to them. Thank you, Deborah. I see Freke and Philip. Um, those are those are points that need to be taken into account. Um, however, I'll reflect on two things. One, the charge was not written by the committee. The committee the committee was created and given this charge. The charge was written by um, the town council. I think. No, it was written by No, us. no, 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 no. It was no, written no. by us, CSWG. It yes, was written by Alicia. And then the, the town manager tweaked some of it, the majority of it. Um, so the purpose, you know, he, he cleaned it up a little bit, but it, it's very reflective of what we wanted. And the the only surprise that came, came was having a one-year term. We never discussed one-year term with CSWG. No, 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 no. Could, so, could you go to the top, um, Allegra? Sorry? The top? Oh, to the top of the page. Yeah. If you see here on the, the fourth part, it says the town manager, Pear Amherst Chatter, that's the appointing body. I'm not speaking about the text. I'm speaking about the authority for the committee to exist that comes from the town. Yes. Sure, because the town we're manager we're... appointed us. There mm. are some committees that the town council appoint, but for CS, uh, CSSJC, it's actually the town manager. Yes. They... So um, what I'm trying to bring out is that the committee itself didn't write the charge. It was given a charge. Um, but What? It was... Let's think of it as a period of time. There was a time there was no committee. And then there was a time the committee appeared and something created the committee. It wasn't the, commun the committee itself. As I said, 
um, the authority as it's given here, appointing authority is the town manager. Yes. Except, um, yes. Appointing, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, we can't change that charge is what I'm saying by ourselves. We can only speak to whoever has the authority and then that charge can change. But um, we can discuss that a bit more. More importantly, I, I would want to know, I've not been in the town long enough, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is there any committee that has its recommendations always accepted by the town council? Because if there isn't, then yes. the point yes. would, okay, yeah, which, what committee would that be? The um, finance committee, most okay. of the time, uh, the town council rubber stamps it. You know, I mean, they will ask questions and discuss and, you know, but there are some committees in our town that, you know, bring recommendations on a regular basis to the, to the town council. That's correct. Yeah. I'm just saying um, we have to find a way, again, using that charge where the word may is used. Um, may means that for the issues that are being brought to the town council, if we look at them and we find that they're relevant to what our scope is, we can talk um, about it. And the implementation is going to be left to the town council. That there's, 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 there's something annoying about it. There's something that is deflating because it, it means that a lot of what we may do won't produce change. But I wonder what is the kind of thing that we would do that would produce the change that we want any time that we desire it. Yeah, I think that this conversation is pretty relevant to kind of what the Human Rights Commission is doing. I mean, we are currently rewriting our bylaws that have not been written over well over 10 years. And so a lot of stuff becomes irrelevant and a lot of new issues come up um, from what our practices are and what we would like them to currently be. So I think that we should definitely as a community as CSSJC every few years, look at the charge. And as far as um, your point, Freke, um, Paul is the one that would rubber stamp it and approve it, but a lot of the work does come from like the working group, like with bylaws right now, like I'm working with it with some commissioners and then we get it to Pamela, she'll get it to the attorney, the attorneys and then Paul will just basically maybe change one or few things, but it, it doesn't seem like he pushes back too much on it unless I'm sure something outrageous gets put in there, I'm sure he would. Um, but your point of keeping the wording may, I, I, I do think that that is great on CSWG's part to put in may and to have that autonomy as to what we can advise on, I think is super helpful. I think adding in this charge of like, and inviting the CSSJC to advise during conversations that deal with social justice or DEI, I think is what's needed that I can see for our charges that if we leave it to individuals to invite, invite us or to seek the advice of us, that may not be where the may is not taken for, for on their end. So I think having a more appointed like, and if a conversation is happening, like an invitation needs to come out to this group. Thank you. Well said, Philip. I think, um, and I'll, I'll take some of the blame because I think when this committee was created, some of my vision, but, you know, July 5th happened and there was so much, I wouldn't call it distraction, but one of the things I was hoping with CS, as JC was to have the co-chairs communicate closely with the, uh, with the town council leadership when issues arise. I don't see like the whole CSSJC meeting with the town council, 
on a, you know, more frequently because of time constraint, but, you know, to have like a collaborative relationship where the coaches, you know, if things come up, you know, that is like a standing meeting or something like that to work with the Lane and Anna, the president and vice president, so that we, you know, we're working together was my thinking, but none of those things happened. And I thought, you know, that should have come, you know, from Lynn. She chose not to work with, with our coaches or with us. That was a deliberate decision that she made not to, because that's what this group is all about, to work with the leadership. And it did not happen. Our town manager never attended our CSSJC meeting. She, he's never attended for once. I'm looking at time is 8.45, so 8.45. Is it 7.45? Seven, yeah, 7.45. <laughs> um, but I was, I was just about to bring up the time issue because I, I do wanna hear the update about Amherst 6. I think that this conversation is really important. And I think knowing that two of you are stepping off next, next month, next month. Oh, uh, me, I am, yeah. yeah. And, and it is what about uh, uh D though? Well. I thought it was three. Is D two, staying? Two, on? two. What about Phil Philip? I can't speak for anyone. I'm just I, I, I was referring to Miss Pat and Philip. Yes, <laughs> I, I will be stepping down. Um I I believe June. June. Okay. Me too. So, I decided I, not to reapply. It doesn't yeah. work my time. Yeah, I I'll so spend my I, my so, time behind the scene. I'll be extremely effective that way. I understand that. I yeah. I am thinking that the remaining members of this committee should take up this conversation again, perhaps when we have new members on, um, so that we can unify our vision for the committee going forward. Um so that said, I think I would like to. Well, I mean, I think let me let me. I, I guess I would want to tweet that. I don't necessarily know if we need to wait for new members. Right. We need to continue this conversation. Yeah, hey. <laughs> yeah, this conversation. I mean, we don't need to continue it today, right. but we need to continue this conversation because this is really the pivotal in terms of what our focus is for this for this group. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, and you don't know who you're getting. You yeah, don't we don't know, know who we're getting. getting. We don't know when or anything like that. So I just want it on the agenda for, you know, the next time and, and just put it on the agenda. <laughs> so that we have it on the agenda as a standing agenda item so that we can continue to have a conversation um, about this. And then when new members come in, we fold them in because we don't have time to waste. This is too critical. This is too important. Okay, so... For now, in terms of follow-up for the town council meeting, I will draft something for next meeting that we will review and I can send out. Does that sound good for everyone? I have a question. So we're, we only have one more meeting left. We need to be realistic with time. Mm -hmm. Are we meeting twice in June or just once? Because based on what Deborah is saying, um, and it's the last... For this term, I'm assuming the new members will start in July. My term is ending in June. So we have one more meeting left. Yeah. People, do people want to meet twice? I can't. Yeah, me either. Me either. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be tough for me too. Yeah, me too. So I think June 14th was the date that we had floated. In what time emails. though so i can make sure we have the correct time to... i'm i i 6 30 i believe is the time yeah, that's what i have on my calendar talked about before so i will double check with jen to put 6 30 and not six so june 14th at 6 30 mm -hmm. will be the next meeting the, um yeah. Before we go to the agenda items for that, though, can we hear from Miss Pat about the Amher 6 update? So based on the joint meeting that we had with the town council, the CSSJC and HRC, it looks like the town 
can only do anything through litigation. And so that's where it might end up that direction. That's all I can say. And once it, when, once it gets into litigation, I will not be commenting pub, uh, publicly so it, because I, I'm not an expertise on legal stuff. That's the update I have. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah. So, and I want to thank you all for your support. Um, I know it took a lot of courage um, to speak the truth. And history will judge some of our Black leaders who continue to question kids that were abused by the police officers. Only history would judge people. That's all I can say. Well, hopefully uh, the town manager before, between now and the 14th will have a good sense to uh, meet with you, Ms. Pat. Um, so at at I some guess. point in June, yeah. After the budget season and stuff, yeah. At some point, yeah. But if the litigation thing kicks in before then, I cannot meet yeah. with them. Yeah, I yeah, can. Of course. Mm -hmm. What I meant is if when the family secure an attorney, yeah. then I, I'm done. Yeah. Right now, I'm still the spokesperson, but once that happens, I can't comment publicly anymore. Yeah, that's understood. But, but history will judge us, you know. We can't get away with it. It's all documented. Who said what? You know, um, MS6 have all the documentation, they have proof. So it won't be like no question. Many, many years to come, our great great grandkids, you know, what their ancestors did, you know, how did they uh, condone injustice? Yep. You know, or push against them. Thank you for that, Ms. Pat. Yeah. Um, I know I had sent out the letter to Paul Bockelman and to the head of human resources that Freke and I had worked on together with the one suggestion that I received. Um, and then I realized I might have done that in advance of our conversation voting and approving on it. So that is my mistake, um, but it did make it to Paul, so. Thank you, I'm, I'm cool with that. You said you, you made the changes, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you I both believe, for working on it. Yes, I believe Friday would be Mr. Livingston's last day as the chief of police. Um, so I haven't heard anything about who is going to be the interim police chief. It sounds as if there will be an interim police chief until a further search can be made. And that the intention is for that the further search for our permanent chief would be heavily reliant upon community input. I have not heard directly from anybody if that means our group. Um, although again, pro proactively we have expressed our interest and desire in being a part of that conversation. Um, so if I hear anything, I will certainly keep you all posted on that. Um, and I do know that the League of Women Voters also sent a letter to the police chief, um, I mean, excuse me, to the town manager regarding the police chief search um, and asking that our group be consulted. So those are the updates I have around that. And I did... I don't think we received a packet for this meeting or for the last meeting. I will find the edited version of the letter and send it back around so everybody can see what was sent in the end. Um, and hopefully there will be a packet at some point. Um, so again, my apologies on that end. And I think those were all of the agenda items that we had. Um, so all I want to say is I hope that the interim police chief will not be internal candidate. You know, if we're going to be doing stuff transparently and committing input, I think to really 
um, help some resident. I can't speak for everyone that somebody that is not within the first, within the APD will be the interim where the search begins. It would be a lot better because some black, brown residents have suffered a lot in the hands of our APD. Some are good, but it would be good to get an outsider as interim. And I'm just speaking for myself, I hope. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Does anyone else have anything they want to discuss um, that wasn't on the agenda? I just wanted to say this is a record for us. It's almost like we sprinted for the past two hours. <laughs> Actually, it was an hour meeting. Did you know that? It was supposed to be an hour meeting. So. It was, but like an hour for us is two hours. And That's then. right. <laughs> so it's less than five, which I am pleased with. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking, I don't see anybody in the attendees. So I guess there will not be any public comment. Um, so let's see, the next meeting is going to be June 14th. Can we discuss agenda for June 630? Yes. Um, so agenda items. I put the charge on there, CRESS and DEI updates, because that will be a regular meeting where they are supposed to attend. Um, and then are we saying goodbye to the uh, members that are leaving? Yeah. Goodbyes. We're going to say goodbye to you guys, and you guys are going to say goodbye to us. <laughs> um, and then we like real goodbye, but I'm <laughs> working behind the scene. I may not be making public comment all the time, but I will keep up with you guys. I will follow your proceedings. Yeah. Well, we're going to hold you to it, Miss Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that I will watch it if I miss some of them. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I do with town council, I do watch. If I'm not watching live, I will still go back and you know YouTube and watch. Yeah, so I will do that. Um, Allegra, can you contact the um, town manager? I guess with the email or whatever you're going to be. I know you're going to be contacting him just to see, you know, just to get kind of already get the ball rolling in terms of what's going to be the process for like replacing the members yeah. and also the fact that we still have one extra member that we could have always put on this group and we didn't so you know so we need to kind of whatever whoever we replace plus that member and to see if we can get some young people on mm -hmm. on this group too because we need a, a, awesome. at least one young person voice and we didn't have that this whole year but we need moving forward we need to make sure to have at least one young person if not more cool. I will contact him before and then hopefully report back. Exactly. Um, yeah. Because usually, I mean, usually, obviously, when you seat the first committee, it's a little bit different, I would imagine. Yeah. I don't know if the plan would be to utilize the same interview team that we interviewed with. So Dr. Love, Keisha, and, um, and Sid. Brother, Sid. <laughs> Um, Your brother <laughs> <laughs> just, just blinked on his name for a second. I apologize. We love you. Um, no yeah, we did not. Uh, well, you yes, the the, the two we of didn't. you didn't did not have the interview because you were appointed from CSWG. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I will I will see if that would be the same interview process or if it would be kind of defaulting to the member of the resident advisory committee co-chairs and the town manager is interviewing so I don't um that's that's how it is for HRC with okay. uh co-chairs of the committee okay. at least one co-chair so um and and the other thing too is that we always said that we'd like to have at least two CSWG members if they're willing mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. you know they you know I don't know if you remember one of the the one of the joint meeting of CSWG and 
Thank you. So I remember town manager saying it would be the initial one. Mm -hmm. And he made he made it sure that he went into the charge. Yes, the initial one. Can he you bring that up again? It. Can you bring the, the, the charge again? He pushed because I thought we had said that if if possible, because oh he did, he put initial he pushed point. back. That was that wasn't yeah. the plan. The plan was, you know, if any former CSWG wants to be part of it, at least two at a time. He didn't want that. He just won the initial one. Yeah, and he did put two initial. One year yeah, term. Yeah. I get so, booted. <laughs> So I and I can just like raise that with him too. you know, can we if if anybody from CSWG is interested in Yeah, they should be given priority. Some priority. Sure. We would rather have them at oversight board. We need them there. Remember, that was the deal. Oh, definitely. But remember, there's 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 still like this. Oh, folks, come on, you know? Deb. We need them at oversight. Remember the plan? Two people at CSWG, uh, CSSJC and two at oversight board. Yeah, but remember they, they haven't even put that board in place yet. I know. <laughs> so are there other things we want on our agenda for the 14th? Um, do we need to elect new co-chairs? I think we should we wait till the new wait until their new members. Yeah, the new people come on, on board. Two more people. Yeah, come on board. Well, mm -hmm. unless you need help though. But if unless Allegra needs help and, and if there's anybody that's willing to, to take that on. Possibly. Um, it wasn't I'm, an agenda. It wasn't on. Oh, you mean in June agenda? I think right. the new. I think the new committee should elect their own. I think that's the way it's done. done. Yeah. done. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, now, what do you think, Frank? You'll be you're going to continue. So, what do you think? Do you guys want to do it in July, or you still want to do it with this group? I think it'd be good to wait and see. It's very possible that we'll have. Um, extremely competent people and yeah so it'll be good to wait and see i remember but, but, but what, but what do you think? seven yeah but what do you think allegra do what do i think um yeah. i think that it makes sense to wait until there's more people to choose from i mean you know what do you mean <laughs> what uh, well i well you and philip are leaving so that right now there are four members Left, yeah for the next term yeah. um and i i know at first deb had said she was she usually doesn't take on leadership roles i don't know how freke feels about it but there could be other members that would be willing to step into a co-chair role mm -hmm. um so i think it's fine to see who, who comes on board who comes on board um okay, so we'll see. That does not have to be an agenda item anything else for june I did, you know, recruit some people to go ahead and apply. So okay. I haven't heard anything. Okay. Good. Two people. Yep. So I have talking about our charge, Crest DEI updates, goodbyes, um, possibly an update about the new member process. And then follow up about the 510 meeting response that mm -hmm. I will draft. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people, new people will join, but let's say the worst scenario, if you don't have new people join, what does that mean in terms of making decision as a quorum? It's not going to happen. I think people will join the committee. But what if, you know, like four people are left? What does that mean? Three people is a quorum? Well, it says it has to be five to seven. Yeah, you just wouldn't meeting. be able to vote on any agenda items. You can have like a meeting to discuss, but as far as voting, but you can't vote. Anything, yeah. But there, I'll tell you, we've come pretty close to not having a quorum in the Human Rights Commission, and Paul usually has a mechanism in place to get people on board before that happens. Okay. I'm just saying, because it said it has to be between five to seven member. So I'm just putting out, but membership will not be a problem. But if you have only four people, 
What does that mean for you guys? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to have it. What's matter, Deb? Deb? No, no, no. I'm nothing. No, I'm just listening. Just listening. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. I think you guys have new members. Yeah, I think. Well, I will reach out to Paul and. Do you two have to officially tell Paul that you're stepping off? Is that some process that has to, like, am I? No, I don't have to because my term is ending term is and I chose not to reapply. Right. And reapply no, no. doesn't guarantee anything, but I chose not to. Mm -hmm. I like to be a problem solver. Right. So yes. just tell me the problem. Let's try to solve it. Yeah. And I will all send a Paul an email. I mean, I spoken to him he knows it's coming but okay. all officially sent up something i just want to make sure i'm not overstepping my role all right i will follow up with him about the process to get new members on board and um i will send out an email on the 7th to remind people of the meeting and if there are any last minute agenda suggestions that will be so did you get reconfirmed is that what it is allegra i i expressed my interest in being yeah. reappointed and yeah. i received a thank you we're thinking about that next week what so I oh. don't know. I don't know where they are in the process. If they have to send I'm an confused. official something, or if I don't get an official something, then I guess we I'm need you. What yeah. Wait, what happened? Why? Well, yep. So my my term is also expiring at the end oh. of June. Um, I didn't know that. So I expressed interest in continuing, and we'll see if if that interest is met with interest <laughs> who, who, did you, yeah. who did you express that to the town manager yes <laughs> yeah so and, i and i just so, and what did you get back uh, yeah something about that they were looking at all the expiring commitments in the next week and they would be following up well all i'm putting out publicly that they better be saying yes if not <laughs> there, there will be a problem yeah, yeah for so, continu for continuity exactly yeah I mean, I can see like minority. You are the only white woman in this group, so why wouldn't they want you back? No, but not not just that. It's just like you know, any of any of us over here. If we if our term is ending and we express that we want to continue on, why wouldn't we be considered for that? You see what I'm saying? I mean, it makes it's never sense. guaranteed. You know, it's up to the town manager to. No, decide. I get it. I get it. But I'm saying for him, if he if he is to say no, then that's him again. You know, just making a huge mistake. So. We just want to, you know, well, I just want to make it clear that it would be him making a huge mistake. So I understand that obviously he's the one that appointed us, but I, I just don't get it. So I think Debbie, it just comes Debbie, down Debbie, to form. I'm really glad to miss you, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it just comes down to African woman. That, exactly. He for sure lets everybody stay on the Human Rights Commission that express interest in staying on. I think your brother stayed on for, for how long? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm saying, especially since we know that this is difficult, that we don't get good members on and everything. And now you're going to be quibbling and saying, so obviously, if you don't get reappointed, there's going to be a problem. I'm sorry. There will be a problem. And, 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 and Freke, this is just an example. This is just an example, Freke, of we can't let the town government just do whatever they want. No, that's not how it works. African woman, and they mislabel us that we are angry. When the white women are assertive, it's different. They're not angry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Speak, African <laughs> woman. <laughs> nice to miss you, Deb. Yeah, of course. I know. This is like, this is a sad, sad day, Miss Pat. <laughs> no, next month. <laughs> June will be a sad, sad day. No, I'm already get, giving up for the sad, sad day. Okay? No, me, 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 me and Deborah, we, you know, we have our thing going with CSWG. We're still exactly. strong. We still me, you know, our friendship, you know, that's the most, most meaningful group I've ever joined in my entire life. I've never okay. seen anything like that. Nobody could break us up. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you say about us. 
we talk to each other. <laughs> yeah, the synergy was just Yeah, incredible. we meet. We meet regularly. Yeah. We're, we're family now. Yeah. We're not going yeah. anywhere. Well, if any of them want to join, back up. We can again. certainly use them. Um, it again. I said, if anyone wants to rejoin, we could certainly use any of them. Uh, any oh, you mean CSWG? Oh, yeah. And yeah. be selfish because I want them <laughs> to join the oversight board. Yeah, they're going to make good trouble there. So I, I want them to be there. Mr. Ross and Brianna. Brianna. Yeah. We selected, uh -huh. and then two of us volunteer for this one. Yeah. Please don't try to recruit them. Please, I'm begging. <laughs> I'm begging. Please, Deb, don't convince them. Please. Please. It's 8.10. It is 8.10, yep. and we have come to the end of our agenda. So are we comfortable with adjourning? Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone. And we will meet again for our last meeting as this <laughs> constellation of the CSSJC in June. We're not going out to eat in June, <laughs> like CSWG did. Oh, yeah, we definitely oh, wow. should. We could After, do that. Yeah. We should go out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that can be decided that. in email, correct? Because huh? it's planning an agenda and or a meeting date time. To go eat, you're saying yeah. go eat, yeah. That is true. So, right? quite, so quite, you know, forming a quorum wouldn't matter because two of us would have left. That's true. Are you going to be around, Philip, in July? Or yeah, I'll be around in July. Okay. Yeah, so it's we can you guys, you know, it'd be nice, at least for Philip, you know. Yeah. yeah I think nice. it would be a nice goodbye. Um, yeah. Or see you later, if you will. That's right. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.